Uh, greetings, friends. It's me, Women29. I think this thing is on. Uh, boy, my distinguished colleague across the aisle. I said across the aisle this time. Uh, it's pretty hard to keep up with. An interview with Allah came out from Venom Fang X. And I know I got, I got icing on this. My lovely wife just made a cake. For my uh, my nephew, he's going to be three, so we're going to be going to that that birthday party. So I'm going to be licking the yummy icing off this knife while I make our video. Um, in the video, an interview with Allah. Um, it appears that in the interview, Allah is. And, and the believers are charged with trying to find prophecies of Muhammad in the Bible. And it's pretty amazing that Venom Fang X accuses Islam of doing that when for 2,000 years, and even when the texts were written, Christianity has done the same. And they have, I mean, seriously. You can't even read Isaiah if you're an evangelical without seeing Jesus behind every single word. And there was a there was a term that I that I learned, and it's a form of writing style. I don't I don't mean this in any way to be disrespectful to the Jewish uh, literature because I love literature. It's a writing style that the Jews used. It's called Pesher. And if I'll I'll put the link to it um, in the details, and you can check and see how that literary technique was used and how it was used in the New Testament. Think about it. Just read the definition of the word. I know Venom Fang X did not learn this word in his Hebrew class in his Bible school at probably Liberty University. Now, I'm not here to bash Liberty University. Some very good people came out of Liberty. I mean, we have Bart Ehrman, who is the foremost New Testament s scholar on New Testament textual criticism that came out and was able to produce books um, geared towards the general public on issues of textual variances in the, in, in, in the New Testament text, which was most helpful to anybody who read the book Misquoting Jesus. Bart Ehrman is now agnostic. He went on to higher education after Liberty University, which I hope Venom Fang X, if he is attending Liberty University, chooses to do. So, we all play the game of finding prophecy about our religions and beliefs uh, if we're associated with the Old Testament in the Old Testament. Um, the, uh, the Mormons do, the Christians do, and as we now know, Islam does. No biggie. And you will find that in every case, if you are not of the belief system, you will be able to refute those. And since I am not um, from those belief systems, I have refuted all of them, but I am not going to sit here and be disrespectful for people's interpretation of Scripture unless, unless it's causing harm. And this video caused harm because it fans the flames. Uh, Venom Fang X is fanning the flames, and he is making it ten times harder for all those people in the mission field uh, who are Christians working in the environment with Muslims on the conversion process. And the next time a Muslim comes in and uh, maybe... Uh, burns down the church. Um, you know, it may be somewhat to do with all the inflammatory things that the people outside of the mission field have been doing against Islam. And they may be retaliating. It sounds horrible, but I suspect that it may have, or may play a part, a small role. Um, if it's the Christian's job to be peacekeepers, Venom Fang X is doing a horrible, 
horrible job. But it's all his own interpretation, and I'm harping about these videos because it gives me the opportunity to talk on issues about conflicting belief systems and maybe give a clearer picture on what's really going on with all these propaganda videos. This video also, in some ways, could be a propaganda video. Continuing the idea on the fruits of the Spirit, which in my last video there was some conflict, but I got some great responses. I just want to read the fruits of the Spirit from the Bhagavad Gita. It was brought up by Stubby Johnson. Thank you, Stubby. Uh, you're right on it. And I looked, and here in chapter 16, it gives the fruits of the Spirit, and then we're going to read a text on salvation. Uh, the discussion of salvation in the Bhagavad Gita. So here we are, chapter 16, verse 1. Freedom from fear, purity of heart, consistency in sacred learning, contemplation, generosity, self-harmony, adoration, study of the scriptures, righteousness, nonviolence, truth, freedom from anger, reunification, sincerity, aversion to fault-finding, sympathy for all beings, peace from greedy cravings, gentleness, modesty, steadiness, energy, forgiveness, fortitude, purity, a good will, freedom from pride. These are the treasures of the man who was born for heaven. Not bad. So, turning to the text on salvation. This is chapter 18, verse 61, for all those who want to just flip on over there. God dwells in the heart of all beings. Thy God dwells in thy heart, and his power of wonder moves all things. Puppets in a play of shadows, whirling them onwards on the stream of time. Go to him for thy salvation with all thy soul, victorious man. By his grace thou shalt obtain peace supreme thy home of eternity. I have given three words of wisdom, and wisdom more secret than hidden mysteries. Ponder them in silence of thy soul, and then in freedom do thy will. Give thy mind to me, verse 65. Give thy mind to me, and give me thy heart, and do thy sacrifice and thy adoration. This is my word of promise. Thou shalt in truth come to me, for thou art dear to me. Leave all things behind, and come to me for thy salvation. I will make thee free from bondage of sin. Fear no more. Most beautiful from a non-Christian text. Most beautiful. So there we have it. Um, I believe I passed the test of finding salvation outside the biblical text. The uh, text of, I mean the New Testament text without Jesus, uh, just for the fun of it, I did that. Also, Ezekiel 18 uh, clearly shows salvation granted uh, through forgiveness, and those who live righteously, uh, it, will be count, it will be counted unto them as righteousness. So, when finger-pointing and causing discord, just remember that maybe we may be doing the same things. And I believe that if we continue down this road, we'll not learn nothing from each other. And I am not going to watch the debate, because I already know how that debate will go. So I'm going to probably be reading a good book and drinking coffee, and then maybe hear about it later. So... Take care, YouTubers. Take care of yourself and each other. I have some other videos I have to do, but I apologize. I felt that this video was more urgent um, to get this view out. But remember to love the Lord your God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself, no matter who or what your neighbor may be. Something to think about. Remember who the Good Samaritan was. Remember who was the person who was robbed and laying alongside the road. 
Take care, folks. And remember, if everybody's thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking.